using my abilities medical staff can be in touch with the patients without direct contact. This will change the role that uh, how humans will operate in healthcare. We need uh, a deeper scientific understanding of how we can use these uh, kind of go-betweens, these robotic go-betweens, which are substituting this physical contact. It may go on for so, so long that it actually shifts you know, consumer preferences to some extent so that some of these, these changes become permanent. And of course that, once again, will kind of accelerate this, this movement toward automation. Overall, there's four areas we can look at. One is in clinical care, in hospitals, uh, in helping treat patients uh, and keeping healthcare workers uh, separated from patients. Well, the other is in logistics, the delivery uh, and handling of goods. We need food, medicine, these kinds of things that need to be delivered. The third is in reconnaissance, in, in um, monitoring areas for compliance and helping identify uh, people that might be infected that aren't aware of it, and also identifying areas that might be contaminated. And fourth, would be uh, this maintenance of socioeconomic functions, uh, keeping us in social contact, but also keeping uh, manufacturing and, and business facilities uh, in, in contact as well. As you know, that uh, the uh, isolation that carries a lot of the uh, um, burdens that uh, in terms of uh, people living alone, and the mental impact in terms of social distancing and isolation. So social robotics is one string of robot development. I am excited that I will be put to use in elderly care facilities to fight against loneliness. The ability for us to interact with each other uh, remotely uh, over teleconferencing systems really, really become uh, important. Um, a lot of us are spending a lot of time online on, on various platforms, communicating with friends, family, also business associates. There have been efforts over the last decade or so in trying to make telepresence robots, and that is robots that, you, that actually can move through environments through, for instance, uh, an office space or through your home and connect to people. And so we're starting to realize how important and how um, it's not the same as being there, but it's, uh, but it's, it's, not, it's better than being completely isolated. So we start to see, see some of these advantages and, and are starting to exercise uh, the, these systems a lot more than we have in the past. Everybody working in this field of robotics is very much aware of the uh, the ethical issues uh, that we have to face in you know in, whether it's in track tracing people, uh, it's in identifying people with disease uh, you know perhaps with elevated temperatures or something. Uh, you know the, these ethical considerations uh, have to be looked at very very closely, and I, I would say that. Um, uh, the people working in this field are, are very aware of that. The main message is that there are going to be trade-offs and there are going to have to be a discussion um, or at least some kind of understanding with the public where people decide, you know, what is most important to them. Are they willing to sacrifice privacy for security? And I think every country basically is going to have to make their own trade-off and they'll come to different answers. Algorithms could be built that are biased against certain groups, um, racial bias, uh, gender bias and so forth. These are all real concerns and as you open that box, these are the things that, that come out. Uh, certainly I can see certain use usage of uh, robots that can be you know, considered better. For instance, that uh, those robots used for reconnaissance surveillance that uh, we probably need to uh, think a little bit more about how to ensure that to privacy and so on. That. Uh, certain technologies are not fully proven that uh, they are trialed, uh, you know, in uh, certain cases. But, you know, this is really the reality here, that uh, on one hand, we really, you know, the, the anxiety and also enthusiasm that for developing or deploying robots. On the other hand, that you really want to make sure they are safe, effective, and also, uh, uh, you know, observing all the uh, regulations um, in terms of privacy and ethical uh, uh, considerations. I think this will be from three factors. One is from public acceptance, and people will acknowledge and accept the real use of robots that as we have appreciated. Second is from technological development. You will see acceleration of those robots already in surgery for instance, into managing patients with infectious diseases. 
and lastly that is really the government funding and so on will accelerate the usage of robots because that this will really minimize unnecessary risks that are already taken by frontline clinicians. In the future, we're going to see more and more uh, robotic systems in hospitals. Uh, they're going to be delivering uh, linens, delivering medicine, uh, relaying test results uh, to the lab. Certainly, the field has already been moving towards more uh, remote uh, diagnosis and remote uh, consultations. Uh, we're going to see more, more lab automation in hospitals. We're entering a new age when the ideas that maybe worked well in the 20th century are not going to be viable in the future where, where technology just becomes vastly more powerful. Um, and so it's really, in, in a sense, it is a good thing that these ideas are being brought out and, and people are beginning to be forced to look at them with a kind of an open mind that maybe not would not have been the case before because eventually we're going to get into a situation where we really need to put these ideas into practice, I think, on a permanent basis. You know, customers don't want to go into a fast food restaurant or into a coffee shop and deal with a machine. They want to talk to a person. They want to interact with that person. They want to chat with the barista and so forth. Uh, but of course, this pandemic has really totally turned that calculation, you know, on its head, really. And now, all of a sudden, there's, there's actually some danger or risk associated with interacting with people. And so um, anything that's fully automated, I think particularly where you're dealing with issues of hygiene, preparing food, things like that, um, if you can keep people out of the loop, that's actually suddenly become not a disadvantage, but an advantage.